What's up, people? How are you? Fred Bugsy Bugs. Fred Bugs, 107.5 WBLS. Um, my first paying job was at WBLS in 1975. Now, years prior, I've worked with Gary Bird and Hank Spann and some of the guys on the AM station, Jerry Bloodsoe, who later on came to WBLS. And uh, my first paying job was a phone call from Johnny Allen, who was one of the salespeople at, at, at 107.5 WBLS. And he was air personality. And Johnny and I were from the same neighborhood in, in St. Albans, Queens Village, Hollis, in Jamaica. Johnny called to tell me that Hal Jackson was looking for an engineer for Frankie Crocker. Frankie was looking for a new board op. They called him engineers then because the money was a lot bigger. <laughs> and I said, okay, cool. So I came to the station the next day and I sat in the room with one of the engineers. His name was Jim Wiener. Jim was a production engineer. What he used to do to commercials, as we still do, and he used to produce the commercials, put the voice over the music and, and did the production with everybody that were in the station. And this is 1975, May 1975. Frankie, I had known from being a child of radio, I would call the radio station to win albums and to request songs. And so I had a telephone relationship with Frankie. And a couple of years prior, there was a guy named Eddie O.J. who lived upstairs with my aunt. He was a big DJ in the morning here in New York. And I came to the station with him, WWRL days, when Frankie was there. I was about 12, 13, 14 years old. And saw Frankie in the morning. He was getting in his uh, Corvette Stingray. They both had them. And he came out the building and gave me the power sign. And then he hopped in a ride and, and pulled out. So now here we go, fast forward. Years later, it's 75, and, and I've spoken to him on the phone once or twice in between him leaving RL and going to the pop station, WMC8, prior to him taking over WLIBFM, which is now WBLS by 1975. So I'm sitting in the room watching how he works with the other engineer who was leaving. And I, I waved and he looked up and he saw and he was sitting in the dark and he waved back. Then he asked for me to come in the room and sit with him. So he's sitting in the room and in the dark with his shades on and my heart's beating like Planet Rock, right? Because now I'm getting ready to get a check because before that I was basically an uh, intern, but I was more of a gopher. I wasn't legally in WWRL. I would hang out and go get the donuts and the coffee, and the guys would give me a big reel of tape. Yo, kid, go back there and edit this for me. Being on the radio for me was being close to the people because when I came up as a boomer in the 60s, there were black folk on TV, but you had to go to acting school or you had to have been in plays or uh, Broadway before you even saw the television, and there wasn't that many black folk on television. So most of the black folk that I was familiar with were on the radio. And sitting there with Frankie Crocker in 1975 and 76 afforded me the opportunities to be there for that. Interesting story, Cecil Holmes, who was a very, very big record executive in New York City and in, in the country, had a brand new artist who is now working for Casablanca Records. And this artist he brought up one afternoon, and, and this is in 1975, was a lady named Donna. So he, they brought her up, and she sat in the control room with me behind me. And as I said, as I'm looking at you now, behind this camera would be where Frankie sat in that wall and Cecil Holmes was there talking to Frankie about this new artist. And in between the songs and, and getting my cues from Frankie, I'm talking to her and she's telling me that she's from Boston and that she was in London for a while and, and had lived overseas and was back in, in the United States and that she had done some modeling. And so I said, my name is Fred, 18 year old guy. And he put the long version of Love to Love You Baby on. And that was the last time I physically was in any contact with Donna Summer. That Donna was now Donna Summer, one of the biggest artists in the world that year, 1975. And at the time at WBLS, we were playing the entire length of Love to Love You Baby every time we played it. At that time, we could play long versions and it was cool. The radio metrics makes it a little difficult to do that now. But that was one of the most amazing moments for me because even now, 
as, as a seasoned vet, I look back at that time in particular to know that I was in that room with greatness and didn't even know it. Well, there were a couple of opportunities like that working for the man, Frankie Crocker. And, and I gotta tell you, WBLS was one of the first to do that song. If you look in the books now, it will show you that Love to Love You Baby didn't really make the charts until later on that year. But I gotta tell you, in May, June that year, that song was already the top of the charts in the streets of New York City. The Frankie Crocker Show and WBLS.